Hi everyone, welcome back to today's training. Uh, I am Roxanne Sutton, the NRPA's Senior Manager of Communications, and I am here with my colleague. Audrey Fox, I'm the Communications Specialist. And we are here today to talk to you about marketing commit to health. Um, so we'll just jump right in um, and talk about what we're marketing. So we hope that our little session today will help you uh, market your programs, which I am sure you're already doing an awesome job at, um, you know, with working with your partners in schools, with uh, TV stations, newspapers, signs and flyers, emails, social media, all those things. Um, but we also want to talk to you about marketing, um, commit to health, the fact that you've made this commitment and you are on board. Um, it's a little bit different and, you know, in a lot of ways, if you're marketing your commitment, you're also marketing your programs. Um, so first I want to talk about how your commitment is unique. Um, as you've probably heard about earlier, um, you know, the HEPA standards go above and beyond the USDA nutrition requirements. And, you know, there are no HEPA requirements for out-of-school time programs, even um, if they're licensed. So, you know, not everyone is doing what you're doing, um, and it really differentiates you from others in your market. So just as a personal example, you know, I have children, they go to daycare, and while, you know, I'm promised healthy meals and physical activity time, um, they don't have a set policy around that. There's nothing that they can show me that says, yep, your kids get, you know, these are our food policies and these are our physical activity policies. And so the fact that you all are promising to do that at your sites, like that is amazing. And that really does set you apart from other people. So let's talk about different ways to market. Um, some of these will be familiar, obviously. Um, you know, we have social media. Um, it's free, but it doesn't mean it's free of complications. Um, and we'll dive more into that one in a minute. Email, hopefully, you know, either you as a department have your own email newsletter system or your city or municipality has an email newsletter system that you can use. Um, my advice here is always that, you know, always make sure you have permission to email those who are on your list um, and then just put out the best stuff that you can. Um, the media, I know that just because I see the, in our own searches for press coverage around parks and recreation, you guys are rock stars at getting media coverage for your programs. So I won't dive into it too much, but you know, the media really is interested in the things that you're doing. I mean, the fact that you have, either if you are one of our grantees, that is media worthy in itself. Um, you know, your programs opening, um, your celebrations, your milestones, any of it, it's very interesting. Um, and your community is interested in what you're t doing. So, you know, build those relationships, reach out and use the ones you already have. Um, and I always do this, do the easy ask. You know, if you don't have the ability to use email or if you're limited on social media, you know, ask your partners to share. If you're working with schools, if you're working with um, other organizations in the community, ask them to share your message for them. And you can make it easy, you can pass on, you know, something that you've already written and give it to them. Uh, make it easy as possible for them to share what you're doing. Um, and then finally, use your ambassadors. And they're you know, a little bit different from your partners in, the, in that these might be your park users, your recreation center users. Um, you know, ask them to share what you're doing through their social media accounts, um, just to help get the word out there. All right, so we wanna hear about your social media usage. And you should have a poll on your screen so I would like to know um, if your department has a social media account and you have the ability to post yourself personally. Um, if you have um, a social media account but someone else manages the content. Um, if someone, you know, maybe not your department but your municipality has social media but not your department or if you have no social media. So far, it looks like just about everyone uses it and you have the ability to post. And we'll give it just a couple seconds to go through. Well, that's great. So then that means all of our tips and advice will uh, be perfect for you guys. Um, all right. So let's talk about what to share on social media because this can be just as confusing as anything else. Um, photos of your everyday program activities. 
And then here's my caveat to where I said social media is free, but it's not always free of complications. Obviously, if you're taking pictures of those in your programs, you need to have photo release forms. Um, most of you know that standard procedure, don't even have to get into it. Um, but if you are a grantee, then you know that you should be using the Walmart photo release form. Um, and if you are not a grantee, hopefully you have one that your city or your department uses. But if you don't, we do have a sample one that we can share and all you need to do is email us and we can send you a good um, example of one that you can use in your program. Um, and only obviously post photos of children or kids that have release forms. Um, but yeah, of your program activities, all the um, programs that people have talked about today, um, activities that you're doing, those are great things to share on social media. Um, photos using the Commit to Health resources. Um, Audrey's gonna show some examples of this, but there are, you know, we have so many resources for this campaign, which is great. Um, you know, show your kids using those resources, show the resources themselves, they're interesting, you know, I think, Again, just using a personal example, I would love to see um, the things that my children are using throughout the day um, when I'm not there or after school. Um, and then, you know, brag about your success. I mean, not just your success personally, but the success of this whole campaign. Um, you know, we have our four-year anniversary stats and an infographic. If you go to the web page that we have on the slide, there's resources there that you can use to kind of just brag about our overall success as a whole and as a community as, of park and recreation professionals. Um, but obviously, any, any personal success that your department has is a perfect thing to share on social media. And again, if you aren't the person who manages social media, just, you know, pass on this information to them as well. Um, and I will say that from people who manage social media for NRPA, uh, we really like it when other people within the organizations share stuff with us to share. It makes our jobs easier. So don't feel like you're bothering that person. They really appreciate getting the information and photos and things to share. Definitely. Um, so yeah, the Commit to Health resources, um, they provide great regular content to share with your networks. There's posters and newsletters and curriculum. Um, there's the Commit to Health research that's been done, um, videos, there's um, those new Foods of the Month recipe videos that are really cool that you can share with your audiences, um, infographics, success stories, blogs, and a newsletter. So that's just a sampling of the resources you can share. Um, but now I'm going to pass it on to Audrey, who's going to talk about hashtags and tracking your campaigns and some tools that you can use to kind of spice up what you're doing. Sure. Um, so again, I'm Audrey, and I handle NRPA's social media accounts, our Facebook, our Instagram, our LinkedIn, and our Twitter. Um, you might have noticed I've been tweeting along today during the training, so hopefully you've been following. Um, one of the most important things that we ask you to do is use the Commit to Health hashtag. It's really easy to do. Um, we use it every time we talk about the program um, and it's really great for amplifying your message. Um, so it ties the message together and it is a really great way for me to be able to see what you're doing and it's easy for me to see, you know, you have this awesome event. So I'm, I see that, I heart it or I retweet it or I share it on Facebook or Instagram um, because I saw that you used the hashtag. Um, Hashtags are best used on Twitter and Instagram just because it's easier to um, it's easier to search for the hashtag on there. People don't use hashtags as much on Facebook. Um, so definitely stick with Twitter and Instagram for your hashtag usage. Um, so I have a couple of examples. Uh, a couple of them are from Anniston, Alabama. So here you see uh, commit to Health Foods of the Month poster being shared. It looks like there's a couple of different events that groups shared and a spin the wheel kind of tabling event at a healthy, healthy event as well. Um, so those are all like really great examples. One big tip, um, it's always use an image when you can. Uh, people digest information visually these days. Um, and so you want to be able to capture their attention. Um, and more importantly, the way social media networks are set up, a post with a video or a photo 
or a catchy graphic is actually going to have a higher likelihood of showing up in your audience's newsfeed. So that's a really big reason to make sure you're using engaging content. Yeah, and I'll add to just coming back to hashtags. If you are using Facebook as one of your primary methods of sharing information and you're like, oh, NRPA is not going to see my post because I can't use the hashtag on there, just tag us yeah. at National Recreation and Park Association. Um, and then we can also like, share, and your content from there as well. Right. Um, and now you can also get really creative. Uh, this year, Instagram came out with going going live, just like you can do with Facebook. So um, it's really a fun way for your community members to follow along with whatever it is you're doing, whether it's a group kayak down a river or maybe a dance event that you're having. Um, so, you know, the more creative you can get, the better. Um, so now I'm going to talk about a couple of the different tools you can use. Like I said before, images are pretty much vital to making your content get seen on social media. At NRPA, we use Canva, which is a free graphic design software. Um, you don't need to have a background in graphic design to use it. I don't, and I'm able to come up with some pretty decent images, I would say. Um, it's really easy. There are a bunch of different templates that you can use that are sized specifically for different needs you may have, like uh, images perfectly sized for Facebook or perfectly sized for Instagram. Um, you can even uh, make your own templates. So if you have a need for a certain sized image for maybe like a postcard or a poster that you're creating, you can also create that. Um, there are stock images in Canva and you can upload your own images as well. And then there are options to add shapes and overlays and text. So you can really get creative and come up with something very good looking. Um, when you're creating an Im image on Canva and you want to add text over a photo, it's really important to make sure that the background, that the photo isn't too busy. Um, if you put text on a very busy looking photo, it's just going to get lost in the lost in the photo. So try adding a shape behind it, like a rectangle, um, and using that as a match. So the eye goes to the text that you want to highlight. So now I want to talk a little bit about scheduling. Scheduling your social media in advance is really going to, you know, save, save your sanity a little bit. Um, as you, I don't know, um, you know, different agencies have different, some are better than others at social media, some have more experience. But as you, as you become more adept at using social media, you're gonna find that you actually have a ton of stuff that you can share. And you don't wanna just share it all at once. You want to spread the content out throughout the week or through, throughout the month. So users have more opportunities to see what you're sharing. So there are a couple of different ways you can do that. Um, we use TweetDeck and Hootsuite as platforms for scheduling. TweetDeck is specifically for Twitter, and Hootsuite has compatibility with more social networks than, than TweetDeck. Um, but when it comes to Twitter, I like to use TweetDeck to monitor, um, monitor our accounts because it updates live, whereas Hootsuite is more static and you have to hit the refresh button. Um, but with Hootsuite, you can monitor Facebook and Instagram and uh, the other social networks as well. Um, Hootsuite is great because it has a URL shortener. So on TweetDeck, you have a limit of 220 characters now. Um, so you want to try to fit as, you want to try to fit as much information in there as you can without going over the character limit. And sometimes a really long URL to a website is going to um, impede on that. So a URL shortener is a great way to um, limit your character count. Uh, Hootsuite's also great because it has a Hootlet um, plugin that you can put on your internet browser. So if you see an interesting article that you know you will want to share with your users, you can just hit the little button and schedule right there that you're going to share this a week from today at 2 o'clock or something like that. Um, Facebook also has its own mechanism for scheduling posts. 
I personally like to schedule posts directly on Facebook just because I have more luck with how the images turn out. Um, sometimes on Hootsuite, I've found that if I have an image preview that's scheduled on Hootsuite, it might look a little bit different once, I actually, once it actually goes up on Facebook. So I personally like to use Facebook for scheduling Facebook posts. Um, as far as you know, looking at your overall picture of your social media planning for the week or the month, um, you need to get a calendar. So you can use your Outlook calendar, if that's what we use. I have an Outlook calendar that the whole department can see. So we know that you know, on Tuesday, I'm going to share, uh, share something about the Commit to Health training that's happening on Thursday. So that's planned out for several months in advance, so I always know what I need to schedule on social media. So definitely, you know, start planning now because you're going to get really busy over the summer with all the different events that are going on in, in your department, and it's going to be very helpful. Yeah, and it's also nice, too, if you share, like if multiple people in your department are able to post to social media, using some of these tools can help you see what everybody's doing. Um, might help avoid overlap and the calendar is really great for that too because we know that these are the things that are scheduled for today so three people don't end up posting something at the same time. Yeah. Um, are there any questions about social media that anybody has? All right, well if you have questions here is our contact information. Um, I will say that you all do a great job at social media because Audrey and I are the ones who sit behind yep. the scenes and, and, and watch it all come in. Um, you know, we like to watch the hashtag and see what you guys are doing and anytime you tag us, we love to see it. So keep doing it, keep doing a great job and, and we'll keep sharing it as much as we can. Yep. And if you have any questions, always feel free to reach out to us. I love helping people out when it comes to setting up social media. So I'm here to answer anything you may have.